Under the frozen surfaces of Arctic lakes and streams, there swims a prized fish. It's called the Arctic char. Sport fishermen have sought it out for generations, and now it's becoming a star among discriminating diners. And that adds up to an opportunity for ambitious aquaculturists, otherwise known as fish farmers. And they believe they've found the perfect place to raise this trout of the far north, West Virginia. Pat McConaughey has the story. West Virginia is known for its coal industry, but now the mine has is, is ceased to exist and we have continued to use this site. We bring the water, clear spring water, out of the reclaimed mine and it comes into this grow out and it's pure and it's cold enough for the fish. That fish is called Arctic char, and if you haven't yet seen it in your market or on a menu, that's because it's a relative newcomer to the lower 48. It's the northernmost freshwater fish in the world. Uh, it's a relative of the salmon and the trout. Trout, Arctic char, and salmon are all in the same family. What you have with Arctic char is you get the protein and omega-3s close to salmon, but as far as taste, it's closer to the trout. So it has a mild flavor, but a lot of protein, a lot of omega-3. West Virginia is a long way from the North Pole, but the state boasts the only Arctic char farm east of the Mississippi, and one of only three in the country. Well, this is an ideal area because really this facilities, our facilities hatchery and the grout are on reclaimed coal mine sites, which is a good example of post mining land use. The risk takers who set up the business in 1997 are banking on the char's mild, meaty taste to make it a hit. The partners that started this company looked at a number of different species and they found that Arctic char would work best. They worked with some nonprofit organizations, did some research, and we found out that with the water as cold as it is, Arctic char is a great species to have here. They've set up a process to help this cold fish thrive at the foot of the Appalachian Mountains. First, the eggs come in from Canada for nurturing in carefully controlled hatchery tanks. At six months, the fish are moved here to what they call the grow-out tanks. They're about 30 minutes away, and this will be their home for the next 14 months. In our process, in the hatchery and the grow we don't use any hormones, we don't use any chemicals. We're all natural. Uh, I think the water helps us do that since it's so clean and, and pure, uh, but we're all natural. We're very proud of that. It takes two years to get the exotic fish to the marketable size. Wow, that's a big fish. So about how many pounds is that? This one here is probably about four pounds, four and a half pounds. These days, the fish farm's producing a modest 6,500 pounds of fish a week. But if some dishes like those Chef Robert Wong is whipping up in nearby Charleston catch on, demand's likely to grow. Let's go ahead and roll it. This specialty fish is sought after by some of the nation's finer restaurants, like Charleston, West Virginia's trendy Bridge Road Bistro. Let's go and plate it up anytime you're ready. Okay. Chef Wong believes the char has what it takes to be a culinary hit. We've been working with the char now for several years, and the char is a very versatile fish. Uh, we love it because uh, we've done a lot of different variations on the fish. We've grilled it, we've sauteed it, we've fried it. Uh, and it's just very, very versatile, and it's grown in our backyard. Chef Wong says Arctic char is a favorite with his customers. We'd heard the story that it is being raised in West Virginia now, in the, um, I guess, abandoned coal mines, and so we thought we would try it. And it's, it's even better to have a chef fix it the first time, so then we'll find recipes for it and try it later. And while Arctic char is still not well known, this aquaculture operation hopes the fish will soon swim from the cold waters of this West Virginia farm to the top of restaurant menus nationwide.